Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out a new mod the Cessna 172 Skyhawk JTA I had never heard of this aircraft before I did a little bit of research on it and this thing we have to try out If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Alright, so getting right into it. First off, I had never heard of a Cessna 172 JTA before. What this thing is, is a 155 horsepower diesel engine. Um, now, it also comes with full FADEC capability, meaning that we don't have to worry about propeller pitch. Um, this aircraft is um, just absolutely uh, mind-blowing. I didn't even know it existed. Uh, we should get significantly uh, better takeoff performance. We should get significantly better speeds. Um, better fuel burn. I mean, just everything about the aircraft is is going to be significantly better if if everything is modeled as we as we are hoping. I mean, just look at the propeller. Look at this propeller, guys. It's just the, the curvature in the blade. Um, it's a tri it's a tri bladed uh, aircraft instead of a twin bladed. Uh, you got the exhaust port pointing down here. Um, it looks just absolutely gorgeous. The modeling of this aircraft was done very very well. I'm super stoked about this. Now, jumping into the cockpit, one of the things that you want to be aware of right away is that you want to make sure that you have the legacy working title G1000 installed um, and uh, not the NXI based on the readme file that comes with it. Um, for those of you who use the NXI, you can just go to the, uh, your profile content manager and remove it if you want to test out this aircraft. Um, I'm super excited to test this out. I'm really looking forward to, to the engine sounds. I imagine the engine sounds are going to be significantly different. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get right after it. I'm not not going to keep lollygagging here so let's do alternators on batteries on uh, let's turn that beacon light on get that fuel pump on for a second here and let's start priming the tank or the uh the, the tank the uh, engine here pulling that throttle back off fuel pump off crack the throttle now i am noticing that using spad.next my mixture control is not working but that's not the end of the world obviously we want to make sure we're at full mixture for takeoff fuel tanks are set uh, let's see here, we already turned the beacon light on. We can turn those nav lights on as well. And let's go for an engine crank here. Nothing yet. All right, I'm going to add a bit more throttle here. Wow, listen to that sound. That is significantly different. Oh, forgot to turn the standby battery on. Wow, that sounds great. Let's turn those avionics on. All right, guys. Sorry about that little interruption there. My freaking husky decided to go take a stroll down the street. Man, if you guys, uh, if you guys get a dog, get one that isn't faster than hell. Okay? Whew! Mercy, that animal's quick. All right. So one thing I do like right away is the oil temp and coolant temp are really taking a while to warm up. There's oil temp, and looks like we're going to be waiting on the coolant for a minute. So we'll just let her uh, let her run up here. We can set our flaps to ten degrees. Can set our barometric pressure. Turn our transponder on. VFR is fine. Heart's like racing right now, man. Damn, that dog's fast. And then he didn't want to come inside, so I had to freaking pick him up. He's only about 90 pounds. And normally that, you know, that's not exactly a ton of weight, but when it's uh, fighting you and twisting and flailing like a jerk. Darn dog. 
He's cool as hell. Huskies are freaking awesome, but damn, they're fast. And so moody. <laughs> All right, so now that that's done and uh, yours truly is getting some freaking oxygen, I think we can go ahead and move on down the line here. All right, let's try trimming it out for uh, altitude here. Watching those RPMs. Now, does that mean that... Oh. So... I'm guessing the mixture lever just isn't used? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. So, I know it has FADIC. I know it has FADIC. But I thought that was just propeller control. But the mixture doesn't seem to do anything. So, what do we got up here? Power percentage. We're at 12% power. RPMs at almost 1,200. Gearbox. Trans so, transmission temperature. Huh. I'll be darned. Well, let's get, uh, let's just move on down the line here then. Parking brake released. Turns like a dream. I've said it before, I've s I'll say it again, man. I don't know, what is it, why third party developers, modders, doesn't matter. Can you always get the turning right, but nobody else can. The default aircraft in this simulator turned like absolute you know what. You know, I didn't even check to see what the wind direction was. I suppose I should do that, huh? Probably ought to pick the correct airport to take off from. Let's see what that's one one left. One one left. Darn it! Two nine or eight. Okay, so we have an extremely long taxi, of course, we're at the other end of the damn runway. These sounds are fantastic. I'm sorry if my voice is a little quiet. I'm not 100% positive. I turned the in-game volume up quite a bit because I knew that you guys are definitely going to want to be a part of the sound here. Um, what am I doing? Get on the taxiway, you dude. Can you guys tell I'm a little excited for this one? I don't even know what its cruise speeds are, man. I'm just, I'm looking for, uh, just the way it's handling on the runway, or on the taxiway, is significantly different than the default aircraft. And man, does it want to taxi. It really wants to get going here. Alright guys, so I'm going to catch up with you when we get down to the runway and get ready for takeoff. All right, we are now approaching runway 29 or right. Now, you guys, before we get into takeoff, I want to remind everybody that I'm, I am quote unquote reviewing this, if you will, or giving first impressions on an aircraft that I really know nothing about. Okay, so I, I have no idea what to expect here. I'm sort of just going to pay attention, you know, to what I know, try to feel what the aircraft's doing, get an idea of when takeoff. Um, I didn't really get a chance. Well, got a chance. <laughs> I didn't want to look everything up. I just wanted to jump into it and see what it was all about. Um, so uh, if I do a couple things wrong here and there, you know, don't don't hang me for it, please. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and give her a stop here. Check the approach. Approach looks clear. Runway one one left looks clear. All right, let's switch over to landing lights and strobe light on and pedo heat on, and let's take the runway. Come on. There we go. It's a very noisy aircraft, isn't it? Not like any of them are particularly quiet, but... <laughs> Alright. Let's, uh, let's lock it down here. Okay, let's see what uh, see what we got here. Max power. Wow, just jumped. Airspeed alive. Oh, come on, come on, come back. It's 50 knots, rotating, and she is up. Sixty knots steady on the climb. Three hundred feet, flaps up.
Pulling torque back there, or engine power, I guess, back to 90% here on the climb. Let's reduce our rate of climb. This thing is flying beautifully. Wow. Nice, strong climb out. Oh! Okay. All right. That's where we're going, huh? Okay, so, right off the bat, flight model feels absolutely fantastic. The aircraft's rocking. We're bouncing. We're definitely feeling some turbulence, which is very, very common, especially this time of day in Tucson. Um, as, uh, you know, as it gets later in the day between, you know, 10 a.m., 4 p.m.-ish, you know, especially between 2 and 4, you know, the hottest points of the day, we get a lot of thermals that build up around here. And uh, as you can see, Tucson's sitting in a bowl, so we get tons and tons of, you know, wind activity as it gets hotter in the day, and those thermals start to rise. We're bounce a lot. We'll really get kicked around quite a bit. It's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> Tucson's not the greatest place to fly when it's hot, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but uh, it, it feels, again, you're using that word feel, it feels great. It really does. Let's see here. Trim and nose down a little bit. You guys have to forgive me if you hear any sicky noises. Uh, getting over a little cold. So forgive me for that. If it pops up here and there. That's why I didn't. That's why I went radio silent the last couple days. I didn't want to try doing recordings while you're hearing all that nastiness. Oh my gosh, you guys, this thing is cool. Bring it down to a cruise here. Sort of see what she cruises at. This is at 90%, 89% engine power. Looks like propeller pitch or you know, torque still sitting about 2,000, 2,100. And then again, just verifying that mixture handle doesn't do squat, which is what we're anticipating, right? Don't look, it does a darn thing. Man, she wants to climb though. Mercy. We did get those flaps up, right? Yeah. Okay. We're a thousand feet above. Landing lights can come off. Whoa. Oh, push the throttle forward. There's 80%. 100 knots. I mean, you guys can see this. Every time... Here, let me try to give you some reference here of what's happening here. Alright, that's hands off the controls now. Let's just see sort of how she flies. Oh, as she accelerates, I gotta this nose down. She requires you to fly it. You know what I mean? Wings dipping a little bit. I love it. Beautiful. Still getting enough. A little bit of rotation on the left wing there. You can trim her out, man. I remember my dad doing this when we used to fly the 172 here and there from uh, Tucson. Sometimes we'd go down to Galas or Eloy, um, you know, and, and we'd go down and have breakfast, and, and he'd fly us back home. And I remember he used to do that, man. He, he'd trim the aircraft out just right, control the, the p nose pitch with the throttle, and then he'd fly the aircraft with the rudder pedals. I mean, literally. Let, let's, let's see. Let's see what that's like here. So let's try to make a left turn here using rudder pedals only. Adding a little engine power. Should bring the nose up. There she goes. <laughs> nice. Alright, bringing that uh, engine power back. Nose should fall. This is just rudder pedals here, guys. Coming right. I might have let the nose dip a little too much. If you let it dip too much, obviously. Nope, nope, there she goes. There she goes. Okay. How's that? This is exactly what my dad used to do. This is so cool. Most of the most of the planes in the sim, I found that you can't do this very effectively with. Uh oh, I might have let that engine power bleed too much. Come on. I'm trying to fix it before we lose altitude. There we go. Okay. All right, pulling back just a little bit. This thing is awesome, you guys. This is a fantastic aircraft. All right, hands back on the controls, my plane here. 
of course, in my plane, there's no one else in it, but it's fun to say it, right? All right, let's uh, let's do the magic. Let's um, let's land this beauty. This thing is neat. <laughs> it has a, it, very clearly a lot of work has been done into the flight model, into the engine performance. The sounds are absolutely wonderful. I'm really digging the sounds. The custom avionics over here on on the on the uh, uh, MFD here the coolant and oil temperatures and the way that they were simulated on that engine start those are huge things to me and i think they add a ton of, of uh, realism and a sense of immersion and give you actually something to practice and work on i am very much a startup and go kind of guy where this aircraft yeah i could have still done it and i'm sure nothing would have happened but at the end of the day you know what stopped me was hey i had a master caution that wasn't clearing you know and uh, so i waited you know this is this is really awesome and uh, again, um, I, I hope to the developer, I hope you see this video, fantastic job. Um, you guys, um, to, to all of you developers and you modders and you guys who in the community who are really you know, using your free time and, and dedicating it to the simulator and making this you know, a fantastic uh, ride for us, I can't tell you. I, I wish I had your skills, I really do. Um, I wish I could do it. I would absolutely dive into it. I wouldn't even. I really don't know where to begin. You know, that would be a really neat uh, video for someone much smarter than me to uh, to put out. I would I would jump all over that. I would love to learn how. I don't mind doing the research, um, but uh, yeah, this is this is wonderful, and and the community is just adding so much to these to these aircraft. All right, so we're sitting at about 2,000 feet above runway altitude. We need to come down quite a bit here, so I'm going to. Bring our RPMs back here. Let her descend here. Coming down at about 95 knots. There's 90 knots. looking for uh, about a thousand feet off the elevation here so uh, we're going to be hunting for about 3600 feet uh, hopefully by the time we make the pattern I'm not quite at the 45 degree for my entry it's going to really a little a little bit of an odd position here for uh, the way I'm flying I guess it's a good thing to know that uh, <laughs> commercial airspace belongs to me at the moment right nope nope come on Oh, okay. All right, so let's try to turn into our entry point here. Got the 45 off of the runway here. Forgive me if I don't have those exactly right. I'm, I'm still learning the patterns. The patterns are actually a little bit trickier for me than, than I thought they would be, not going to lie. Definitely need to work on on my. Uh, I need to work on my pattern work. <laughs> this is cool. I love the sound. That engine just sounds wicked, and and you can very 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 distinctly hear the difference in the prop sound between the twin blade and uh, and the tri blade here. I mean, there's just such a significant difference here. Okay, so we're coming back into our pattern altitude looking for about a thousand feet. I'm gonna get rid of the yoke again. Landing lights back on. Come on, baby. I'm, I'm in a little close. My, my wingtip should be. Well, actually, no, that would be on a low wing. I don't think that applies for us. Never mind. Disregard. Disregard. I've been flying the G36 a lot, so I'm in the habit of putting my wingtip on the edge of the runway. I guess that wouldn't really make sense on a high wing. You'd find yourself almost too far out at that point. All right, so we are steering a bit away from our runway. I didn't think to look up the, uh, believe it or not, I actually forgot what our reciprocal is for 29 or 8. I don't remember what 11 one, one left's course heading is. 108? Is it 10118? I can't remember now. see here so yeah I mean we're close enough we're almost on it it's not too bad no point in adjusting at this point whoa 
Like I said, it got a little far out. Alright, let's go steady down, flaps one. The aircraft immediately wants to lift up on us. Looking for 60 knots on the approach. For that runway to be off our 45 here, it's close enough, honestly, for this aircraft. Start bringing it in for that three degree descent rate. Go for flaps 20. Looking for that three degrees, looking for that three degrees. Pulling power off a bit as we turn base. Cessna 807 Golf turning base for runway 29 or 8. And 80 Golf turning final for 29 or 8. Alright, let's bring the full flaps in now. A little high on the approach, not too bad. me my space shuttle landings always 55 knots on the tape Gonna aim for them numbers aim for them their numbers coming down five degrees now there's that space shuttle landing not that I would ever want to be an astronaut actually well I don't know the right into space would be cool after that I feel like you know be like all right now what all right gonna overshoot those numbers a bit Pull that descent rate off, power off. And let's looking down the runway. Oof! Little bounce. Not my best landing there. Came in a little hard on that one. A little hard on that one. Alright, flaps coming up. Alright, let's get her down below 20 knots. There we go. And let's clear the runway. Nose wheel handling is fantastic on this aircraft. As we clear the threshold, strobe light off, landing light off, taxi light back on. And we are free and clear. All right, so guys, I'm, I'm not gonna take it all the way back here. We'll just sort of cruise here for a second. But let's uh, let's get a. <laughs> it is so weird for me. I know there are so many of you guys that can do it, but I, I can't. I can't steer the aircraft for crap when I'm in the external view. Um, anyway, uh, this aircraft was absolutely fantastic to fly. I mean, it was just, it was so, so much different than the default 172, so much different than the G1000. Uh, the, the, the performance, the flight model, the, the rocking and rolling of the aircraft, the engine sounds, the startup, I mean, everything about it was just, it, it's a new plane. It's a completely new aircraft. Highly recommend it. Jump all over this one, guys. It is so cool. This was so much fun to fly. I am absolutely going to be uh, jumping back in this aircraft quite a bit. Um, this is probably... I mean, the way it felt anyway was... I mean, I would say it was close to that Just Flight uh, Piper Arrow, guys. Um, as far as the flight model goes, it really felt... Uh, very challenging at moments. I mean, it was it was very clear, especially during that takeoff. You know, we started getting really bouncy. It was very clear if, if I tried to play this like a game, I was going to lose it. Um, so, uh, anyway. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Link for this aircraft always down in the description, guys. Um, and uh, I will see you in the next one, guys. Fly safe.